Good afternoon. Um, my name is Carter Crane, and I am a current junior at Hendricks College. And my name is Alexis Cantu, and I um, go to UCA. And over the summer, we've been interning at the city attorney's office, and we've been researching school bus violations. So what we're going to be going over today is our research of violations of Arkansas Code 27-51-1004, um, which essentially means that all vehicles must stop in every direction um, in the presence of a school bus that has its stop sign and its lights on. So we gathered this data through police reports and the reports made by the bus drivers. Um, we gathered this data throughout 2021 and through 2022. And as we can see that um, the highest rate of incidents was during the afternoon, and this has been the same since 2022. Um, throughout, we see that 38 people were charged um, in 2021, and 28 pleaded guilty, 55 people were charged in 2022, and 47 pleaded guilty as well. Um, and here are just some basic demographics of who's been committing these violations. Um, so in 2021, um, females were at 45.71%, while males were at 54.29%. Um, the percentages were almost the same in 2022, with females at 45.48% and males at 54.72%. And then as far as the ages who are committing most of the violations, in 2021, ages 20 through 29 had the most occurrences. And in 2022, it was tied between ages 20 to 29 and 40 to 49. Um, and according to our data, um, we see that the bus drivers consistently reported more incidents of stop arm violations in comparison to officers. And this is because um, of the availability of these cameras that make it easier for the bus drivers to um, report these incidents because obviously, as we know, officers aren't there at all times. So having these cameras are very beneficial to us. Here is the most important part. Why does this matter? Um, essentially, the children's, children's lives are at risk. Um, and here, oh, oh, cool. <laughs> um, and we took some examples of like excerpts from bus driver reports. Um, in cases that were okay, so here are some excerpts from bus driver reports in cases that we found like especially alarming, um, especially the one in the middle where it says three children were outside of the bus, one child was running to the other side, and the car just missed the child. Um, so these are like the words of bus drivers writing reports. Um, I feel like it really just puts into perspective that this is a major issue um, that we need to consider. We've also seen recently in April um, of this year that there was a kid that was hit um, by a, an incoming vehicle as the bus was um, in a complete stop. And this is a great example of why, you know, violations of the statute is critical. You know. I don't know if any of you guys are parents and have children or any, like grandchildren as well, but no parents should send their kid to school with the fear that they're not, like, they're not going to make it home. And um, so failing to abide of this statute puts the lives of, um, of these children at risk, and we need to prevent this. Here are just um, all of the locations of incidents. Um, during 2022 and 2021, just so that you can have kind of a visual of where in Conway um, violations are happening. So for both years, 2021 and 2022 as well, we see that South Donaghy Avenue, Meadow Lake Road, Oak Street, and College Avenue have been the hotspots of these incidents to occur. And I also did some other research and I found that as of 2024, these incidents are still the hotspots today. So next we take a look at sentencing, um, just kind of trying to get an idea of what does the typical sentencing look like for people who are violating the statute and are the punishments that um, have been given effective. 
Um, so in 2021 and 2022 in the city of Conway, um, people who received jail time were people who, that are, who already had heavy traffic history, um, while people with little to no traffic history or first offenders um, typically had their jail time suspended or didn't receive any at all. Um, majority of offenders were offered community service and um, paid a fine. And then individuals who had their jail suspended were typically under the condition of no new violations for a year. And then here are just some facts of like the average punishments given out of all of the police reports that we looked at. So me and Carter have taken a look and to see if, if the city of Conway has given punishments that have been um, beneficial to the offenders. Um, and we've seen that there hasn't been any, re, um, let me see again, uh, 2021 and 22, there hasn't been any reoffenders. Uh, well, the same people that committed of this violation, they didn't reoffend once again. Um, by looking at this, we see the effectiveness of the methods implemented by the attorneys within the office. However, violations do occur today. So, yeah, essentially punishments are working. So we were wanting to take a look at how can we better prevent initial violations. Um, in 2022, educational pamphlets were introduced as a part of the punishment for many violators. Um, and we think that this is a great idea and we handed out some of the pamphlets to you today um, because we believe that distributing pamphlets can spread awareness and also make violators more educated on laws that they just might not have been aware of and that way they can educate others to prevent these violations from happening again. Um, so we encourage pamphlets um, to be a regular part of punishments for violators. We strongly believe that the distribution of educational pamphlets is beneficial to our community as it serves as a way um, to inform the citizens about school bus policy and the consequences of noncompliance. We also believe that the distribution of these pamphlets um, should be uh, more enforced as a form of community service to these violators um, because it can allow these violators to become advocates of this, um, of this statute. Um, one. Our overall goal is to be actively engaged in educational outreach through pamphlet distribution within the community. By spreading awareness, the community will begin to see that the statute is something positive for us and it aims to protect the lives of, of children. And here's um, for everyone in the audience. This is the updated pamphlet that we created um, based on Carl's, Carl's ideas that he had about what he thought would be beneficial on a pamphlet, what people would need to know. Um, so you can see just we kind of broke down the statute underneath the wind to stop. Um, just in simpler terms so that it's easier to understand. Um, and then there's also visuals of where traffic needed to stop at two and four lane intersections, as well as um, just a four way stop. And then also the penalties, just so that people can understand the severity and the consequences of their actions if they were to violate the statute. So as stated before, we know now that bus drivers are the ones who report the incidents the most. And I think our one of our, one of our priorities should be to ensure the safety of our bus drivers and the students by introducing um, more availability of video cameras to all buses in which uh, helps con continuously monitor, monitor and provide valuable evidence in, case, in cases of these violations. And with the evidence, um, is helps capture license plates in often the faces of these violators. Having the availability of this technology will make the process of reporting easier, safer, and more efficient for bus drivers. Does anyone have any questions? I, I have one. Would, will you have an opportunity to present this to the school board? Because I think they would be very interested in seeing the same information. Thank you. It was very, very good.
I, if I could just add, I don't, I don't want to cut anybody off, but <clears throat> the mention of the cameras, that's the significant part. When, when, when you all approved the partnership with the school district a few years back to put those cameras on it, I mean, I, I'm telling you, there are kids walking around now because of what y'all did. Well, it, your office has been a great player in it too. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, sir, Mr. Jones. <laughs> I mean, this series, but yeah, I really? have dealt with people in the afternoon. I don't know what the cameras are. But and they might have. So that's the cops are really. I mean, who? I don't I know. Like they used to tell us all the time, two years. Right. It's two. It's two. It's standard two. Yeah. Two. Any questions from anyone? Thank you.